I'm curious, how did your involvement in this one come about? I know that uh, you and I want to say Garrett, uh, I think is the writer name. Yeah, you two have, you know, you've worked together before, but how did it come about for this one? Um, we started with this idea around um, placebos and placebos. We we're just quite interested in, in that area. And we read a, uh, a book um, called Sleep Paralysis, Placebos and Placebos, and the Mind-Body Connection um, by Shelley Adler, sort of a medical anthropological book. Um, and we just started exploring that idea um, and that led us to um, the Philippines, really. We kind of, it's a strange process. I'll try and do it quickly. <laughs> it's, it's, a long, it's a long story, but we started with, um, with this idea and then we started thinking about how placebos and placebos are related to shamanism. And in Ireland, we were like pagan before like pre-Christian Ireland was pagan animist and we um, we had shamans and these powerful women in society uh, called like um, wise women who had like, they were very uh, connected with nature and were able to cure people. So they kind of got uh, pushed out with the arrival of Christianity. Um, and so we started thinking where in the world is this practice still, um, you know, commonplace. And um, the Philippines, although it's not that common, it still exists in um, particularly island, the islands of Cebu and Sequahor. And there's still quite a tradition of this of folk healing. Um, so we started looking into that and we started seeing these weird similarities between um, Irish folklore and Filipino folklore. And then, you know, there's, this, there's a similar um, there's a similar history in that we were colonized by the British, they were colonized by the Spanish, um, Christianity and colonialism sort of quashed traditions of, uh, that were, were more like um, nature-based. Um, and as we sort of saw these connections, we thought we should explore it properly. And um, we got a little bit of development uh, funding we went to um, Cebu and Sequahor Islands um, with a local producer there. And we met with uh, shamans and witch doctors and um, uh, the chiefs of the uh, Bajau and Ati tribes on Cebu um, and visited garment factories as well because we were kind of seeing this, this connection between, um, you know, colonialism and neo-colonialism and exploitation. Um, so then we could see that there was a there was a good story there. It was coming together. We wanted to make sure that it was sort of as as uh, authentic as possible. Um, and I went to China to Macau to pitch the project um, at a co-production market to try and find uh, Filipino co-producers. And we did. We found uh, Epic Media, and uh, producer there Bianca is actually from um, Cebu. So she her she was brilliant to to uh, a collaborator you know and then she helped us cast and then we found chai who's also uh Cebuano, um from the island of cebu and then we brought on a, a writer uh, ara chaudhuri uh, to help us with all of the scenes there and then also a shaman from there to help make sure everything was was genuine in the story uh this guy bong um and yeah so it was it was a strange process i mean garrett and i worked together for years and um on this film it was really just like starting with an interest that led to research which led to a co-production between ireland and the philippines and um, so yeah it was an adventure well it sounds like a a, a fun one uh, at the very least uh and and it's one too that I love how it's then brought about this important message uh, in regards to you know these these garment factories so to speak and and the dangers there and so you know was that something that came about organically from your your travels in terms of incorporating that into the story or was it um, after after you had visited it was then you you started looking into that specific element further? Well, we knew we wanted the antagonist in the film to sort of be. Um, an exploitative person. Um, so, I mean, that was an element that we were, um, we could see the connection already between um, 
between exploitation and uh, colonialism, which then turned into this kind of capitalism um, and neo-colonial uh, exploitation, you know, the people uh, exploiting people from afar by, um, by hiring these kind of sweatshops and everything. Um, so that was an element that was always uh, something we were sort of taking aim at. Um, but we weren't totally sure how, how everything would connect until we kind of spent time there and could see um, that, that there was a connection between all, all of these sort of elements, you know. Um, yeah, that's pretty much how it worked out. So then what was it like finding the, the perfect person to play such a character that would then still have to try and, you know, ground the audience for, for much of the film in, in, this, in this world? Do you mean Ava's character or Jack's yeah, character? Ava's. Well, Ava. well honestly, <laughs> but yeah, Ava's. Yeah, they're both great. Um, yeah, I mean, like, uh, I, I just thought Ava Green would be amazing in the film. Uh, she's a brilliant uh, actor and she's, um, she's very expressive. And um, I also wanted to, I thought if she'd do it, um, it'd be great to kind of, try and get to see her in, in, in different ways, you know, like um, her character, within the actual, uh, the narrative, we were kind of also doing this placebo nocebo effect that like switching allegiances, what you think is good might be bad, what's, what you think is bad might be good. Um, so I knew that she could pull that off, you know? Um, and so we offered her the, the role and she, um, she really liked the script. She really liked the material. She is quite um, a political actor, I'd say as well, um, particularly in the area of human rights. So um, the material really resonated with her. And then when she said she'd come on, she uh, was brilliant to collaborate as well. We kind of worked together on the, the script and the dialogue and everything. And then with Chai, um, that was more challenging because it was quite a, you know, I didn't know how to cast the, the, that role really because we weren't able to kind of, because of COVID as well, we weren't able to sort of have proper normal castings. And um, I also knew I wanted to find an actor from Cebu, uh, really, ideally, um, so that her accent would be genuine, that she'd understand the, the culture and the dialogue. And it's a different dialect as well, the Tagalog. Um, so, um, the producers in the Philippines and also Ara had worked with, um, with Chai before. We probably saw about 15, 20 people, but Chai did a self tape and it was just like, ding. Um, she did this amazing thing in her tape where she would say something that could be taken as slightly threatening, but then disarm you with this big smile, this sort of warm smile at the end, and then go back into being a little bit odd and then smile again. Um, so I just thought there's something really fascinating about that because it also, her character um, sort of playing into um, prejudices of the audience, you know, how you, uh, what you think we might be doing isn't necessarily what we're doing. Um, so she was able to, to thread that very well. I was going to say, it sounds like she nailed the, the ambiguity perfectly just in her audition tape alone. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. And yeah, she did a phenomenal job in the film. Ava did as well. You did as well. Uh, and I, I know I'm about to run out of time. So uh, I will let you go. And thank you so much for taking the time to chat. I, I appreciate uh, your time. And I really love this film. And I cannot wait to spread the word about it. Ah, cool, man. Thanks. Glad you enjoyed it.